my baby Just three weeks to go The rain is falling wildly But the moon is still aglow In tomorrow there'll be sunshine And the garden will be green We'll lay a bed of lilies for you to dream My baby, my baby Just three weeks to go Your mother's singing softly To the music playing low She feels you, she feels you From heart to heart to knees The love for you is as deep as the sea You have my word as the earth As the sun, as the water, as the rock There is no question there or not You have my word as the branches have the sky As these lungs take the air There is no question of why my word is good My word is love My baby, my baby Just three weeks to go The house is a buzzer that is a patient for you, you know From the inside to the outside The faces here, they glow Girl, you're welcome here It's more than you know You yeah, have my word as the earth As the sun, as the water, as the rock There is no question there or not You yeah, have my word As the branches have the sky As these lungs take the air There is no question of why My word is good My word is love My baby, my baby Just three weeks to go Your father's preparations For you have found the We should be able to get up here before it gets too dark mother, She is resting For a journey to bring you home Uh, yeah, Google Maps said, uh, I don't have it up now, but I don't know, I think he was saying like an hour and twenty total From the bottom To get up, up to a certain point Where, I don't know I'm not exactly sure what the elevation of Riggs Lake is, but passing just just now 7,000 feet, I'm guessing we're going to climb another 2,000 maybe. Yeah, I got uh, elevation on the navigation here. I'll, I'll pull it up. Uh, Sounds good. Looks like we might be uh, dropping a slight bit in elevation then going back up. Got into the burn area here. Wow, some of this mudslide looks like it just happened. I think we're pushing about 9,000 feet. Oh, is it a hawk moth? Probably a hawk moth. Yeah. I mean, the name's fitting based on the size of that thing. <laughs> Kidding.
here no more. <laughs> you can see pieces of shredded metal. Oh, dang. Yeah, man, that's some and look how serious that, runoff. Yeah. From 110 to 63, you can have to beat that. Now oh, that's a huge change. And uh, that's where you gotta be careful, obviously. Yeah. It's not the it's the not the most ideal situation, frankly. No, no. Oh hey. Looking good? Yeah, it will. Yes, sir. Jeez, the staircase is like a freaking Incan temple. What's this? This staircase here is like an Incan temple. <laughs> hey, buddy. I was looking at him like, oh, that's going to make my feet hurt. <laughs> here you go. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, absolutely. Is it okay? Yeah, it's fantastic. Thank you. You, oh. like, you like them, don't you? They're good. Yeah. I like the uh, Papagos, you know. Oh, okay. But uh, and they're orange as well. I like that. But this has got a nice flavor. Hello everyone, Scott Luthold. Welcome back to another episode on the Four Expedition YouTube channel. 
Today I'm coming to you from a lake called Riggs Lake and it's located on the top of a mountain called Mount Graham. Mount Graham is located right near the town of Safford and Thatcher, Arizona, which are both located close to the eastern border of Arizona. Riggs Lake is just a wonderful little place to come to this time of the year because uh, even though this mountain is considered what we call in Arizona an island in the sky, which means that it's completely surrounded by probably about 2,000 feet in elevation of of just very rugged desert terrain all the way around. Mount Graham is actually a mountain range that when you start climbing up on in your vehicle, it climbs through all sorts of different climate zones and climbs all the way up to somewhere in the neighborhood of 9,000 and even maybe 10,000 feet in elevation. And this lake is sitting almost at, I would say about 8,500 to 9,000 feet in elevation. And right now it's completely full of water because there's been a lot of snow up here. And so even though central Arizona is mostly desert, uh, this mountain actually can get snow because it does get a lot of uh, storm weather coming across the desert and of course having a, a mountain that's this high in elevation surrounded by desert can cause a lot of interesting weather patterns. Anyhow, I decided to uh, get out of Phoenix for a couple of days because uh, the Phoenix weather is around 111 degrees and I just needed to get out of town so I invited my friend Brian, you've met him before, uh, invited him to come along with me on a little weekend getaway. Uh, we were going to head to Flagstaff, but the Flagstaff area had a lot of thunderstorms for this weekend, and so we wanted to avoid that as much as possible. I do like thunderstorms, but it's a little different when you have to spend the entire weekend in the rain. Came up here, uh, it's just been a, a beautiful time so far, no rain, uh, it's been very cool, it seems like there's been a lot of rain lately. I got up early this morning and uh, came down to the lake, there's already a lot of families down here fishing, it's a real popular pastime for families to come up here and fish. Anyway, it's just going to be a real relaxing weekend and I'm going to uh, share a couple of interesting things with you, so just sit back and enjoy the ride, thanks. Yeah, it looks like Brian's up getting breakfast ready. Let's see how he's doing. Just climbing the Incan Temple. Incan Temple huh? Oh, oh look at who's that. there. He's hey, buddy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Little nutcase. Ah. <laughs> Let me zoom out. The app it shows the road, the right? Tablet and uh, just log in yeah, it does. and start streaming. You will love it. I don't know. Let's go down there. Fuck it. Let's see what take Sirius XM anywhere you damn well please. Oh yeah, there's somebody camping back there. A lot of undeveloped sites in here. Look at them all. Yeah. This uh, view of the desert down below. Listen to that. You hear that? No dogs. That's cool. Look down that valley down there. 9,000 some feet down. So we decided to get out in the Jeep today and head down the road a little further past Riggs Lake, uh, turn off to the campground there, and it turns out we came upon a really nice Jeep trail that uh, has some undeveloped campsites that are free. And some of them have amazing views of the desert below, but I was telling you earlier about being an island in the sky, and you can see here how um, the desert down there below, I mean, that's your typical Sonoran Desert um, landscape down there and you can see where the um, the flora and fauna starts to change as it starts to climb up this mountain peak here as it gets up over here and then you kind of come up into where we are here in the, in the thick beautiful forested pines but this particular camp right here has um, a horse stable 
it's got a whole roundabout here, so you can drive a whole horse trailer back in here. Some nice camp spots here with amazing views. We've got a bear box here. We even have some trash. Digging this. Nice little ride through nature here. Wow, yeah. This is what all this forest used to look like before all that burned. Think? Two years ago. He yeah. said two years ago burned. Uh, two years ago. Yeah. Wow. upon a really, really nice camp spot that's pretty remote. No people back here. No dogs barking from the campground. Nice little fire pit there. Really nice meadow here. Thick forest. Nice thick trees. So as crazy as it may seem, after uh, Brian and I took his Jeep out and we got off the beaten path just past the turn off to Riggs Lake, we found that uh, there's actually some undeveloped camp spots back there and um, there's a couple of Jeep trails that are fairly rough to get back into, but um, I assessed it. Looks like the Subaru should be able to get back there and we decided that we're going to, we packed up, we're going to head out there and we're going to set up camp for tonight in order to get away from uh, the people that are in this campsite. It's a little bit noisy, dogs barking, and it's all fine. You know, a lot of people bring their kids here and camp and fish and whatnot, and that's all great. Uh, but I, for one, and I know Brian also, are definitely more into getting out to places that are remote and quiet. And the spot that we were just at that we found uh, literally the only sound that we could hear was the sound of <sighs> the sound of the breeze blowing through the through the needles of the trees pretty much that's about it so we're heading out there it only took us about 15 minutes to take down our camp and set back up that is a really nice thing about having an overland setup of some kind if you had a tent set up it would take a lot longer to take all of that down but we've got this uh, pretty well mastered and we're now on our way heading over there it's around 12 15 we started um, we actually left that camp spot that we found at about 12 o'clock so it's only been about 15 minutes that we got back to camp took our stuff down and now we're heading over there so we'll get set up over there and then um, uh, we heard about a really cool place by the camp host here that has a year-round 30 degree ice cave and apparently there's a cave here that's situated just perfectly where winds come in and um, you know and the circumstances are just right where uh, you can climb into this cave and it's just apparently wall-to-wall -wall ice so we're gonna try to find that and and maybe um, share a little bit of that with you and then again as I mentioned earlier I've also got a couple of other things I want to show you about some camping conveniences some things I haven't showed you before so all right we'll uh, we'll check in in just a little bit once we get camp set up
nice big chunk right there. Oh, that smells good. You know, uh, pine scent smells a little bit different out in nature than it does in some kind of potpourri back in the home. This stuff is the real deal. Melt this down at home, get a nice fresh pine scent going in my house. Really can't beat it. See that? Just a matter of seconds, I collected some nice tree sap. Little gold nuggets. You know, in Arizona, you really get the plethora of weather, don't you? Yeah, you really do. I mean, it's awesome. He's not going anywhere. He wants some of these two-year-old lentils. You want some of this? Hmm? Here we go. So Brian and I were hanging out outside and watching the uh, the lightning storm and the weather started to get a little bit worse so we decided to both call it a night. He went into his Rubicon and I'm on the rooftop tent. <clears throat> I should be up here most of the night. I would hope that uh, the weather won't get too much worse. Um, it hasn't really started raining much but there is lightning and thunder. Uh, if it gets pretty severe I'll probably go inside the Subaru but for the most part I'll stay up here. Anyhow I'm tucked into my little cubby up here on the rooftop tent and i um, going to just hang out here and maybe read a book and listen to the storm. Count the seconds between the lightning and the thunder. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. It rained pretty hard last night, so I moved the Subaru into the sun because, as I've mentioned to you in the past, uh, this rooftop tent has to dry, and if I leave that up on top of my car when I get home, uh, it'll probably get a little mildewed in there. So I moved the vehicle into the sunshine, let the sun uh, dry it all out. Okay, so one of the things I wanted to show you is just how much extra storage space that you can create in your Subaru Outback if you remove the spare tire out of the back and you add a spare tire carrier on the back and hang a, hang a uh, full-size spare off the back of your Subaru. So uh, about two weekends ago, I took my girlfriend Amy and she has two sons on a camping excur excursion. I didn't do any filming on that weekend, but um, I had four people in this vehicle I had uh, two sleeping upstairs, I had two sleeping in the back here, 
And uh, once I loaded everyone up and all the gear, I actually had to readjust a couple of times to close this rear tailgate because uh, it was so packed full. And frankly, uh, I wouldn't have been able to carry nearly as much stuff if I wouldn't have had the spare tire carrier space. So I'm going to show you just how much stuff I can fit into that rear spare tire area because it, it's probably around um, a foot deep and it's probably about two and a half feet wide and about three feet long. And that's a fairly significant amount of space to put a lot of soft goods, a lot of um, soft-sided gear that uh, you might be able to carry. And when I, when I put all my stuff inside here, I actually leave it in here all the time. And I can still uh, haul groceries and furniture and different things in the back of this Subaru and I leave that gear in there. So I'm gonna take a few minutes here to show you exactly how much stuff I've got put in the back here. So Subaru Outbacks have this nice plastic liner in the, in the back to keep, um, to keep the back end very nice and clean. So we take that out. And then you've got this uh, spare tire carrier cover, which you can lift up. And I actually, I'm gonna lift it right off here so I can show you some of the stuff in here. It might not look much, like much on the surface, but I'm gonna take everything out of here so I can show you what I've got. So this here, this is an inflatable chair. Take that out. I've got a Helinox chair. Actually, I've got two Helinox chairs in here. They both fit nicely. I've got a full-size waterproof tarp. I've got an extra queen-size air mattress so that if uh, uh, I have Amy come along with me and I want to go in the rooftop tent with a partner, I've got a full-size queen, a double, I guess it's not a queen, it's a double-size bed. I've got my shovel in here. Got a little football. I've got a full shower, so if I have a lot of people camping around and I want to take a shower and have some privacy, I've got a full size stand up shower. I've got a really nice uh, Mi Photo tripod. I've got I've got an inflator here for my air mattress. I've got. A Subaru uh, water container. I've got this huge Luno Life uh, bed set and um, it's a two-person sleeper that goes in the back of the Subaru. It's uh, quite large actually. I've got, I've got toe straps and I've got Two bags of tools, um, a tire jack, and so on in here as well. And uh, I already pulled it out, and I didn't really talk about it. Uh, some I've got a little shower that goes with that uh, stand-up shower. And uh, other than that, it's just a couple little uh, parts and pieces for a high lift jack. Uh, but as you can see here, it's actually a pretty good size space. It's almost the size of the back of the vehicle. Um, and you saw that I put an awful lot of gear back there and um, it's really a really great place to store stuff. So if you've considered a rear spare tire carrier and uh, you're looking for good reasons to do it, other than the fact that you can put a full-size KO2 all-terrain tire on the back that matches the, um, you know, the other four uh, wheels and tires that are on the vehicle, this is another really good reason to do it. All right, so as I mentioned, I had a couple of things that I wanted to show you on this particular trip. Uh, last, uh, a couple times ago, I filmed uh, an episode called Car Camping Basics. I want to turn that into a little series to be able to introduce people who aren't really all that familiar with car camping to uh, the concept of it and not only uh, provide them the basics, but also maybe uh, allow people to uh, learn from all of my experiences out here to make that experience that much more enjoyable. Uh, a lot of times, especially with uh, guys that I know, say they have partners, female partners that aren't really into camping. Um, my partner Amy really wasn't into camping, camping until I introduced her to um, how convenient and comfortable and enjoyable it can be because she had had an experience in the past which totally sucked and um, uh, they ended up going camping somewhere, got completely rained out, packed everything up in the middle of the night at midnight and went home. Uh, when she had gone in the past. So I wanted to introduce her to a, a really special experience of camping and I certainly was able to do that and now she actually enjoys it. 
So being out here, um, I learn a lot of different things and, uh, and, and I'm always looking for ways to improve my experience. As I've mentioned in the past, I've had Rubicons uh, with adventure trailers and I've, I've come up with really wonderful, convenient ways to make that experience enjoyable. And um, with the Subaru Outback, I've got, uh, even though the back end of that Subaru is really quite large, um, uh, if I wanna bring everything along that I enjoy uh, using in the Outback, and in, the, in nature, I, you know, I want to make sure that it's compact. And so one of the things that I introduced you to last time I had a Car Camping Basics episode was uh, my outdoor workout setup. I like to work out, um, I try to stay consistent doing so, and uh, there's no exception being out in nature. Now, of course, you can do a little trail run or run down some of these dirt roads to get some cardio, but if you want to do some lifting, um, you know, you've got to figure out some kind of a setup that actually works and it's also compact it's lightweight and so on so uh car camping basics episode i did last time i introduced you to my setup but i got online on amazon and i found a really interesting system called body boss total workout system it's totally compact and it's very lightweight it's very transportable and it really it, it really takes almost no room in my car when i get it all packed up so i want to take a few minutes to show you how this system works and then after that, I'm gonna do myself a little workout. Okay, as you can see here, I've got my normal push-up handles by uh, Lead Push-Up. You use these uh, similar to this, they rotate. You know, you can do a, like a nice push-up this way. But uh, the Body Boss system, you got this bag of equipment, and then you've got this platform that you open up and you stand on. So I'm gonna open that up and show you how that works. All right, so you've got this platform, you stand on here, you've got these metal hooks that you can flip up to attach different uh, attachments to for different types of workouts. So let me pull those out and I'll show you how that all works. All right, so in this bag, you've got all sorts of attachments that attach to this base. You've got these stretchy straps that have hooks on the ends. These hook on to uh, these different um, metal attachments here. Comes with two of them. You see that here. I also keep in here my jump rope because that's how I get my cardio when I'm doing a workout. And uh, then um, you've got these handles here. And then you've got this pretty nice little pull up or pull up bar. Goes together pretty easily. You can use that like this, like this. And then basically, you got these tension straps. I like to hook them on. There's also this device here. This is for at home, if you, or even in your car. You can hook this inside your car door or in your house door and you can do uh, pull downs and things like that. And then, um, I'm not even sure what the heck this thing's for. I'll have to look that up. But it includes uh, an entire workout kit which provides you all sorts of awesome workouts that you can do using just this, this equipment here. So between using this, this uh, platform with these tension straps, uh, my, my push-up handles, this bar, and my jump rope, and actually I have this as well, which is uh, my trusty uh, tension strap that I've always used. Uh, sometimes I take this thing and I'll hook it on my Yakima rack on top of my car and uh, I can use that for doing um, uh, triceps and things like that, shoulders. All right, so then you use this tension to do your pull-ups and different things like that. Um, you know, it's not gonna be the same thing as doing weights uh, in a gym, but you know, we're out in nature and we've got a full gym here. But as you can see, you can, I can do a wide bar, I can do a narrow bar here. I'll do the wide bar, put my feet out a little wider. So for each of these workouts that they provide you, you use the tension bands in different configurations to increase resistance and make things happen. I've used the Body Boss system a couple times out here on my adventures in nature, and I have to say that it's a pretty significant improvement over my last workout system that I'd put together for myself. It's very compact, it fits into the car nicely, um, there's a nice carrying bag that goes with it that keeps it uh, relatively clean. Uh, the workout system itself offers a lot of different exercises uh, that work a lot of different muscle groups. And one of the things I really like about it is that the uh, tension bands uh, 
offer a lot of different options for different resistance so that you can get a stronger uh, workout experience. And then if you want to uh, do some cardio, you can bring a jump rope along or you can go do a trail run and breathe in some of this beautiful mountain air. And again, as I said, uh, I've got the push-up handles, which go a long way to keeping your hands clean and protected from um, just putting them down in the dirt. And then if you wanna do any kind of a, uh, you know, stretching exercise or whatever, you can bring a yoga mat and do some yoga and meditation. Uh, I think it's a really wonderful option for being out in nature and being able to still get your workout in. If you're a van lifer and you're looking for some way to stay in shape when you're out on the road full time, I really think something like this is a good option. I'm not uh, fully endorsing this particular product, but I would have to say that the Body Boss does offer a lot to uh, somebody like me that's looking for a, a, a quick, clean workout. I'm sure there's other products on Amazon you can look at and um, consider, and I'm sure some of those are very, very good as well. But for me, this option's been uh, pretty good so far. So this is Old Columbine. There's a visitor center at the top of this hill where I just was that uh, I guess it'd be considered New Columbine, maybe? I don't know. But uh, I dropped down here, it was only half a mile off the road, and it turns out there's a lot of cool old cabins here, so I thought maybe I'd walk around a sec and explore. So about two years ago, there was a pretty significant fire. There's a lot of stuff burned, but it looks like they did a good job of protecting this area. Some pretty cool little old cabins up here. Not very many people here. I don't know if this is forest service property or if these are private cabins or what, but pretty cool area. And it looks like this little cabin down here just, just by the skin of its teeth avoided the forest fire. Looks like there's some, a lot of dead trees right all the way up to the edge of it. Still a pretty cute little cabin though. You don't need much more than that. Pretty significant burn. Nice little freshwater stream running here.
lot of snow runoff there. So as I mentioned earlier, there's an ice cave up here that I was told about by the camp host over at Riggs Lake. He's local to Safford, and um, I was going to try to find that. However, Brian decided to go home, wasn't feeling all that well, and I'm out here by myself. It's about a two-mile hike in, which isn't really a big deal. But when I got to the trailhead, I was talking to a couple people here that are local to Safford, and they said that uh, when you go out there, generally the people that go out that are locals bring some ropes along and uh, tie ropes around their waist and it's a drop down in and uh, when they get down in there there's uh, wall to wall and ceiling covered ice which I'd love to see and apparently it's year round because um, it's in the perfect location where cold air comes in and and uh, the, the sun doesn't affect it too much however I don't think I'm gonna hit that today I'll probably come back up here with a couple of friends and and do some exploring into that area and hopefully we'll be able to bring that to you someday down the road So Shannon Campground is a nice little campground I enjoy every once in a while, and usually there's not very many people here, but today it's closed because there's been some active bobcat activity in here. And according to the National Forest Service, um, basically it says here that uh, safety due to recent aggressive bobcat activity in Shannon Campground. And uh, I was talking to Brian about it, and he said something about a four-year-old girl getting attacked by a bobcat in this campground. I mentioned a while ago that the U of A and the Vatican have a observatory up here called Lucifer. And I just wanted to show it to you. It's right there. Looks like maybe the forest fire burned all around it. But um, it's a big, crazy looking box thing up there. And I'll show you some pictures of that from the internet. As far as I know, the public's really not allowed to go up there. Every road that I've seen heading in that direction basically says no trespassing. So, anyhow. So right now it looks like uh, it's 66 degrees out. I'm still at 9,000 feet in elevation. I'm heading down the mountain. And uh, as I drop down through the elevations, I'm sure it'll eventually increase and increase all the way up to probably about 105, 106 degrees is what I'm estimating. Okay, so we just passed 6,000 feet. Current temperature is 78 degrees, so it is slowly climbing. But 6,000 feet, we're still getting a nice cool temperature. Okay, so we just passed 5,000 feet. Looks like we're at about 89 degrees. So we just passed 4,000 feet, it's 94 degrees. All right, so we just entered into Safford. Uh, the elevation here is right around 2917, I guess. So I was a little bit off when I was telling you about the elevation earlier, but looks like here in Safford, the temperature is right around 99 degrees. All right, so we just passed the town of Pima, which is about 2,500 feet in elevation. It's about 100 degrees outside right now, as you can see. I'm definitely down in the, in the desert now. Palo Verde, mesquite trees, acatillo, uh, prickly pear, things like that. As you can see in the background, that's Mount Graham. So I'm down in the desert, up there at the top of Mount Graham. It's probably about 60 degrees and uh, pine trees. But uh, this has been just a really great weekend adventure. I'm really glad I chose to come to Mount Graham as opposed to going up to Flagstaff. Uh, I'll be doing a couple more adventures here real soon. I'm expecting I might do a tiny cabin experience here real soon somewhere in uh, this area actually uh, once it cools down just a little bit. Um, but I really appreciate you spending some time here with me at Four Expedition. Until the next time, take care.